Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to FM23 Youth Factory, episode number 18. The nightmare has finally ended. It is bad. It's quite bad. But it's also a could-be-worse scenario, as bad as, as bad as it has turned out. The nightmare that has ended is the transfer window. It is finally closed. We're into February. All four players that we were having already or set to lose when we left off last episode they're all gone but at least back on loan temporarily brooks we already knew was heading to reading that happened in july but schmizek deal confirmed on the 12th going to swindon town only 12k but we do have our claws and our loan back penarese deal closed a day later Forest Green, 21k potential, again loan back and our 50% of profit as necessary. Bick, deal closed on the 15th, going to Burnley, 15k flat, but again loan back, 50% profit down the road. It's going to be rough. Four players to replace this offseason and potentially this offseason, more players outgoing we came absurdly close to losing two more players uh, before the end of the window things just didn't quite work out one they got to the stage where it was in excess and i would have to accept the deal but i was in good faith trying to uh, get the loan back and trying to get the 50 uh, percent first of the initial and then 50% for of profit and they ended up deciding that they had enough of my demands even though I was budging but I wasn't budging terribly well they just kept offering more money I quickly went from like 17k to 30k in the offer 30k is nice but that's still really nothing I needed the the future profit and they just were not having any of that deal they wanted to give us a little bit of cash now and be done with it permanently it looks like they were thinking about selling him for profit down the road knowing they could get him cheap now so they were willing to overpay now current value so that they could turn around and sell him for a whole lot more at least that's how it felt the negotiation was going with that as they were absolutely not budging on the profit piece and that is the key piece for us they pulled out of the deal not i as much as i was desperate to not have them sign the deal my hands were tied i have to do what i have to do as the rules stipulate but they backed out of it i'm sure during the off season he's going to end up going anyway and probably to them or one of the a second club kind of came in and uh almost almost over the the mark but came up just shy of it so i'm guessing i'm guessing he'll be gone in uh in the summer but here's how the club looks now our two best players are now leaving us at the end of the year our fourth best player is leaving us at the end of the year and Panaris, also uh, our seventh best player. Quinta Ferra is the player that came absurdly close, meaning we were going to be down to Ashley Jones, who had interest on deadline day as well. No offers of any value uh, for him. But I fear that, you know, the time is coming for him. Fish also had some interest on deadline day. Usually that's an indicator that we'll get more later and it'll get bigger because Bick was getting those kind of offers in the summer Schmizek was getting those kind of offers in the summer and Penrice now the tables have moved on and now it's Quinta Ferra and Jones and Fish that are getting that mild attention that makes me think in the next transfer window it's going to go from mild lukewarm to we got to have this player offer what's necessary 
And of course, what's necessary still really isn't much other than really conceding that they can give us something later when they sell them on for more. This is something that I have not encountered. I have done some version of this with little tweaks to this series because I absolutely love playing this one and I still have not achieved the ultimate objective with it because usually viewership was started too small and got even smaller. Production times are just absurd for putting out episodes for this one. In fact, I've already, I'm just starting to record and I've already been working on it for four and a half hours today just to get through January because I couldn't go on vacation and speed things up because that's how things were going. But also part of it's, I'm tired. Uh, my wife's from the Philippines. I've been to the Philippines multiple times and the Philippines made their first ever World Cup appearance, men's or women's. And the women's game, their first match was last night at the time that I'm recording this. I'm quite a few days ahead of time on recording this one as I had some time, but I'm feeling a bit like a zombie. Just a bit. I'm, I'm pretty tired. I was up awfully late to watch that. Uh, and the U.S. have their first game tonight, and the Thorns have a game that's going to overlap at the same time. I'll be watching on my phone uh, as I go through public transit on the way to... Uh, the game and then once I get to the stadium and even after kickoff watching both but in all my years of playing this I've never had this level of players lost I've lost two in a window before I've never lost more than two in a window and while I would lose typically one a year and that's what we had done in the last two years, losing one each year. We've suddenly gone from two all time to six all time. We've literally doubled the total number of players lost all time just this season. This is going to change things. I think I need to cash in on uh, Ethan McLaren and get that money and do something with it because there's a very good chance that we're going to see enough of a downgrade in next season. The guys are all on loan back. We're going to cruise through the remainder of this season. We're going to get our promotion. But there's there's an awfully good chance that we could stall out in the next season or maybe the season after if we continue to lose players. Replacements are definitely not in the quantity of four these days. I mean, you know, looking at our last couple of intakes, it's been about two players a season that we're bringing in. Uh, we've got Kitching, who is just about ready, and he's going to definitely be stepping up, I think, to uh, take over Schmizek's spot. But we're going from a 104 to a 52. It literally half the quality of the player he's going to replace. Uh, Coots may have to come up. You know, you've got maybe five guys here that are going to be semi-capable of stepping up to the senior squad. Reserve-wise, Tom Fish could absolutely step in. Uh, has Thornhill made any progress? Lanahan Penrys, I think, is progressing uh, without looking too closely at any of them. But Brooks is out, so that means Mortland or Thornhill will uh, be taking over his spot. So that's a big jump down. Penn Reese is going to be out. So we are back to Maxwell Grigg. We had a couple tiers ago and was not great at that level and has done very little progression where Penn Reese started about a 61. He's a 79 now. He's the one goalkeeper who has managed to pr progress where Grigg is largely the same. Schmizek will definitely need a replacement. Is that going to be Chris Webb or, you know, the guy in the 18s? Possibly the guy in the 18s coming along. Uh, but it could be Webb. Either way, that guy's going to be, you know, on the senior squad for sure with Schmizek out. And then Bick. Bick is gone. So that's another attacking player. Now we have Trainer, who I think the assistant coach likes to play on top uh, for the most part. So. You know, trainer could play in either position. Uh, but what do we have to back him up? I don't have... I, I, fish? 
I guess that's that's going to be Fish. Fish stepping up into the uh, attacking mid role and trainer on top. That seems to be the direction we are headed. Uh, so we, we do have the immediate replacements, but some of them are half the quality of the players or they are just two thirds of the quality of the players that they are replacing. And then of course, they're going to have to be replaced on the bench. And there's only so much that we have. And if we lose any more players during the summer, especially if we don't get loan backs on them, we could be in a bit of trouble. The league has gone well lately, though. We are 19 points ahead, having played 28 matches, which means we are nine matches into the second half of the season, which means we're half a match to being three quarters of the way through a year. So you, you can chalk that up as we're three quarters of the way through the season now. And with a 19-point advantage, I mean, that's over six wins ahead. We're not far from wrapping up the title. All we really have left to compete for uh, at this stage is the uh, Les Phillips Cup as the league is just about wrapped up. But again, I'm not worried about this season. We have the players this season. We got the loan backs. That's great. It's next season that worries me. Uh, we're on to the quarterfinal with Cadbury Heath who are 15th in our league, should be a pretty easy opponent uh, for that one. And that'll be in just over a week's time. Let's start with that. But playing at a high level looks like high level, i.e. championship with quality training facilities, with quality staff, with high level competition. This is what that kind of development looks like. This is Ethan McLaren as he stands now. We still don't know what his proper value is. We, we have the old estimates, but we never quite know what his real uh, current value is. It's much higher than what it was when he was signed. He's still just 19, and he's already considered Premier League quality. He's that good. His speed? Okay, fine. It's the same as Ryan Gordon. But he is better in every other way imaginable, including a 15 technical, a 14 vision, and 11s, 12s, and 13s in every other meaningful stat outside of defending. And even then, he's twice as good as Ryan Gordon, his replacement. And it's only actually been a year and a half since he left the club. A year and a half. That's it. Still in the championship. Still with Sheffield United for now. Still have the money pending, which I could cash in on, and I'm so desperately close to taking that deal with the fear of what's to come with all these players leaving us. I know we have all these clauses in place and long term, it's going to help us out. But I, I, I just I feel like short term, I've got to cash in on one of them to make some progress here and now to help us short term. Because I, I'm really fearful for uh, what what's going to be left of our roster here pretty soon. But anyway, 34 starts for Sheffield United, 10 goals, 5 assists, and a 6.93 rating isn't amazing. He, he's not that good yet, but according to the scouts, he's good enough to be in the Premier League, which means you, you feel it's inevitable, especially at 19, and with plenty of potential remaining, it feels like he's, he's bound to get swept up. I'm really quite surprised it hasn't happened yet but I think the biggest argument as he's making half a million a year as a 19 year old I think the biggest argument for why he hasn't gone anywhere as of yet is that Sheffield United no matter how unhappy he could be internally with the club and that there's a limit to how far you can carry on with that. He's got to deal through 2028. It's 2026. He still has more than two years left on his deal, which means inevitably they're going to ca cash out either this summer or by the next summer at the latest. But that, that could still be a pretty hefty wait for us. It should bring in a lot more money than what you're getting now. I mean, he could easily be... A 50 or 60 million dollar player 
by next summer or certainly by the summer after, I could see him being worth a heck of a lot. Just for a better comparison, Bick is our best player right now. Bick has almost the exact same quality as to when McLaren was sold and moved on. So at a year and a half, McLaren has gone from something very similar to this to where he is now, you know, with a physical of a plus three, a speed plus one, vision plus one, technical plus three, aerial plus four, mental plus three. Bick's pretty good for our level. I mean, we're talking about somebody who is playing well, roughly a 7.0 in the championship. The gap between these two, though, is fairly significant. No wonder he's doing about an eight. Weird thing, though, is his value at the moment. It's only 6.8 million. It's surprising that he's not coming in quite a bit higher, especially as uh, strikers tend to have higher value. Side of yet another league win, the only trophy left to us is this Les Phillips Cup. Three wins to go in that one to uh, secure a double for the year to match what we did last year, but it was two out of two last year. It is a higher level. Let's see what we can do. Can we keep our winning ways going? We're on the road, but we are pretty heavily favored against a team near the bottom of our division. Oh, nice through ball for Gordon, and Gordon straight at the keeper. I think he kind of saved the ball himself for Gordon as Gordon uh, kicked it straight into the keeper's chest. Another through ball. Bick is going to get on the end of it first. He really shouldn't have got there first. Defender should have had that. It's considered an own goal. Huh. It looked like uh, Bick stuck a foot out, but it, it was probably the defender desperately sticking the foot out. It was Lake Bryan coming in to help. He was the one who missed the, uh, the cutout on the pass in the first place. The defender that was chasing, who was then beat for speed, like Brian, throws a leg in there to try to get there first, and does get there first, but he pokes the ball right into the back of the net, and we lead 1 0. That one off the crossbar. Hopwood grateful to hang on to it. We haven't had a shot on target, but we already lead in this game. Red Nap with the early cross for Trainer, and Trainer gets there first and heads that one past Hopwood. And there's our first shot on target, and it's 2-0. Nice play. Trader's all the way back here. Recovers into his position, makes a run. It's well spotted, well crossed, and Trainer, who I have no idea how he sees that ball as it's back over his shoulder, but he somehow gets the head to it and gets the shot on target. Well placed. As someone who is particularly good at headers. It's one of my best traits. If I were taller, I would be amazing at it, but as short as I am, I, I've got good hops. I beat people all the time that are a good six inches taller than me. It's just the when they're more than half a foot taller than me that I start to have some difficulty out jumping and out reaching and out heading them. But I've scored damn near as many header goals as I have with my feet over the years. That's a difficult, difficult task to do over the shoulder as we actually make it three here, Atkins. Lays it off for Brooks. Brooks finds Trainer who retreats back and turns just onside there. That pass coming through just as he had gotten back into an onside position as he had strayed over. And when the pass didn't initially come, he retreats and then just gets onside, goes to the ball, meets the ball, turns, blasts it into the right hand side of that. That's one of the first times this season that we've realistically seen a keeper unable to stop a shot such as that one. It had good power on it, but it definitely didn't have bend to it. It wasn't in an impossible position. There was probably enough time for the keeper to react. This one, though, absolutely no chance. It's the defender who needed to win that header and put it out for a corner. Doesn't. And Bick makes it four before halftime. This quarterfinal is definitely in the bag. Let's see. Okay, I, I get the Walsh Walsh coming from the opposite side there on Bick trying to challenge for that. So I can see that Bick has the better positioning to win that one. But the near side center back, 
didn't even make a play. Bick again, and five. Is he onside, though? Flag could be raised here. This was awfully close. No flag raised. Was he onside? We'll see from the replay here. Oof. I don't know. I don't know. He's off the back shoulder of, of the defender marking him. But how was the line compared to everybody else? The left center back played him on. Left center back played him on just by a hair. 5-0. Definitely in the bag. Four shots on target. Five goals. Yeah. Yeah, that math makes sense. Obviously, the own goal was the extra component to that, but still. But still. Let's let's uh, go check out that semifinal, huh? As the game is just about to end, there's literally seconds left here. Uh, Bick has scored another. The final here, looking like it's going to be 8-1. And unless things changed in the last four or five minutes of the game, for every shot on target, though there is the one exception with the own goal, but the math adds up, and it does. It does still add up. For every shot on target, a goal was scored. 8-1 shots on target, or 8-1. Now, of course, we had a single shot on target that was saved because the own goal did not count as a shot on target. We weren't even the ones to kick that ball. But on paper, anyway, eight goals from eight shots on target and one goal from one shot on target. Nine total goals from nine shots on target in this match is an absolutely insane stat. Also insane is that there is combined less than 3 xg to get those nine goals so we've taken our new youth intake and for the first time it's actually quite disappointing it's an average intake what that really means hard to say until we get in and properly evaluate them but it probably means there isn't a ton of potential and it probably means none of them are going to be really ready to contribute. I did go through a new head of youth development uh, this season as we lost the previous one. I actually also just lost lost our U23s coach, but by the 22nd of March, which is more than a month after where we had just left off at, uh, we have now wrapped up the title. Ashley Jones has a new much larger contract has something to do with us climbing the ladder he's almost making a living wage now almost it's not enough to survive on it would have been enough to survive on 20 25 years ago but uh, at least in the u.s it's not these days and so taking a moment to evaluate the intake and what we actually received we have a goalkeeper who's a 30 91 30 is literally the bare minimum and there's a number of 30 to 39 players in here there's not a whole lot of quality let's see there's one uh, yeah just one two three four five players that are a 40 or better and a sixth one in wilkinson who's a 53 142 we literally have one player good enough to join this team this season that's it there is one and maybe two more that have a future at the senior level except for the fact that we are losing four players at the end of the season and quite possibly at the rate things are going two to three more with seven spots to fill they've got to come from somewhere and our u18s is the place where that is going to be best in terms of potential wilkinson does come in above everybody else kitching has been that top guy and you can see these two are pretty much same quality so there's two players 100 that will be stepping up to the senior squad evans does come in kind of the next best plus hutchings uh probably taking over as our reserve goalkeeper but i'll have to compare them all to dashfield positionally is probably going to end up finding himself on the senior squad sooner rather than later but this was a pretty rough intake. I will not be keeping all. I mean, there's a lot of guys down here with very little quality. 35 or below is more than half of our U18s. Under 40 is two thirds 
of our U18s, and all but two are under a 50 current ability. So they don't have it right now, but will they have it ever? That's the other piece. And down here, you can see there's the read things are going. I think there's only going to be three that I can properly say no, they're not going to have a home with our team. Maybe, maybe this entire intake is. So I suppose there's the trade off, you know, looking back at those U21s. Yeah, there's, I mean, 61 and below is the, is all but two of these guys. And then the under 23 is there's nothing. So while we really only have one to two proper players to help us out, the depth portion was good within that intake. The low end, the worst player is better than most everything we've uh, we've got. So I guess we will be taking the majority, but it's also gonna be time to start making some decisions. Probably half of what's here is gonna get bumped up to the U21s and the U21s is gonna be gutted just about because getting back on that current ability you know, we only have those three guys that have ever made any improvement, and Hallam is still locked in at a four. Ever since we removed him from the senior squad, he and Ken Lee stopped improving. And the only other one who ever great gained a point was O'Sullivan, and they've never gained any more. So I, it's definitely time to get rid of all of those players, part ways with them. We have enough in-house, but I don't know, man, are we uh, struggling for some quality? My nerves, my nerves regarding next season are uh, getting worse. Definitely not better. I'm not relieved by that intake at all. Easily the worst one we've had. And no one ready to come into the first 11. Only a couple players, and one of those is not from the intake. One of those is from last year's intake that are ready to come in and support the first team. So there's only two guys ready to step up. We've already got four outgoing, but we'll have to deal. We will have to deal with it accordingly. We will definitely have a, a different look and feel to the team coming up fairly soon because we're almost to the end of the season. Now, speaking of almost to the end of the season, 35 matches played of, what, 38? So just a few to go. Well clear at the top. Plus 77, though, is nowhere near the 95 points that we have. It's a minus 18 compared to where we had been, which means we are, goal differential-wise, half a goal per match worse off than we were a year ago, simply because we moved up a level. We essentially have the same team. There wasn't a drop-off, right? We had one player replaced. We had 10 continue to get better, plus a replacement player come in. We are better than we were a year ago, and yet... We lost a half a goal per game. Tactics were the same. Players were almost entirely the same. We moved up a level. We're about to move up a level again. And, unlike last season, we're replacing damn near half our starting lineup. And at the rate things are going, probably more than half our starting lineup. I'm, yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm rightfully nervous for, uh, for next season. But we still have that less Phillips Cup semi-final in about two weeks so we'll, we'll play that before we wrap this episode up real quickly here i can actually expect that we're going to be spending a lot more money next year on salary and it should be increasing value of players which could benefit us but realistically it's it's still only moderately so because ultimately they're not going to give us much money because of the level we play in and so we're we're still in the same position but Realistically, the more you pay a player, the more their value is going to be considered and therefore uh, boosted, especially as you're climbing the ladder. So we'll be better. We are likely to get a little bit more could, and I doubt it because, you know, for like a championship club, paying a million dollars for a player is nothing if they're the right player. And we are literally at just, you know, 10,000, 20,000. So we're not even into the hundreds of thousands yet, let alone to being anywhere near that million dollar stage. And therefore, I really don't feel like it's going to th change things much. But 
we should at least start getting a little bit higher, you know, 50k, 60k for the players that we're losing as opposed to the 15 to 20k that we're getting now. Something, right? There are just four teams left in the competition, so it's really easy to diagnose just three opponents and know what you're up against and what you're facing. So here's the situation. Four teams remain. We, of course, lead the league. But after that, the second place team in the league is hosting one semifinal and we are hosting the other. So the top two teams in the league still in the competition and both hosting semifinals as we take a corner kick here. 20 minutes in already. Wow, it's going awfully fast. Uh, looks like we have a, a big shove on that corner kick to push somebody off the ball. Trainer steps up, takes the PK here in the 21st minute, and we take the lead. That's his 39th goal of the season. As we continue on with this, we have really lucked out because of the other two teams that are in this competition. One sits sixth in the league, so a, a 2-6 matchup in one semifinal. The other, you remember how this this one is the, the greater league? Wow, that went off the underside of the crossbar, straight down to the line and cleared off, or maybe a foot in front of the line as Schmizek makes it so close to a second. Uh, we are suddenly all over them now that we've opened the floodgates of getting that first goal. That one's cleared out, though. Trainer, I have no idea what he's doing way out here. And then he loses the ball. Hey, they're going to get a chance. Free kick, dangerous position. Penrace gets, gets a stop, knocks it down, recovers it, picks it up. Anyway, these guys, they play in the tier below, in the lower division of this league. So we've lucked out that one team did some giant killing. Not that it's massive giant killing. It's one division, right? It's one difference. And we have no idea. They could be first place in that league for all we know. Either way, they definitely don't compare to the top few teams in our league. And this could and should be an easy one. We only lead 1-0, though. Speaking of only 1-0, over the last eight matches, give or take, it hasn't been smooth sailing. We continue to have some struggles this season. We've found it tough at times as that one's cleared away, then cleared again, then we recover. Nice run overlap by Redknapp. Gordon switches play. Jones hits the side net. A number of times this season, we've seen ourselves in the odd situation of massively outperforming our opponent and losing or drawing. And it's happened twice in those last eight matches or so. So uh, really selfish play there. Atkins, Jones, and a nice recovery tackle there from uh, Mortland. Mortland getting the start today over a f over fatigue. Uh, we also have Quinta Ferra sitting out over fatigue. So we got a couple of younger guys in. Uh, our last match that we... Drew 1-1, even though we completely dominated and they only had about 0.1 XG for the entire game. We had six players out on interna international duty. Not all of them are in the first 11, but enough first 11 players were missing that one of those intake players that we just got, not even the best one, the second best one, got his debut. Ashley Jones in off the post, scrapes a post, Flashes across the goal, but hits the inside of the side netting, and it's 2-0. We still dominated that match, even though we were playing down, but I think it's a real sign of what's to come. We're missing three, four guys. We, we get one of those new intake or U18 players playing up with the senior squad, and we can't get the result. We come out 1-1. More and more, we've seen that this season in all we've lost the two cup games in the other two tournaments we've lost two league games we've had four losses this season we haven't had four losses since literally the first year that we played and then on top of that we've drawn i think three times so seven times we've come away not with the result we've dominated five of those seven 
just couldn't quite get the job done. But that's the indicator. That's the worrying part. Our performances have taken a definite dip this year as Jones puts that one off the crossbar, but it goes out of bounds, up and over, and time's almost up. Too late for me to bother with subs, so be it. It's fine. It's 2-0. We're moving on to the final. This was pretty unconvincing. These guys play a division below us. I put sub two subs on, and they weren't bad subs. They were two of my favorite ones to get into games in Webb and Mortland. Moreland, one of those up-and-coming guys that I'm trying to set up to take over uh, for, well, the guy he's in place of, actually, right now, in Brooks. It does worry me. I, I, I've said this about five times this episode in various ways to really emphasize that I am nervous about the season to come. The four players we have already officially lost, if it stops at four, I think it's going to be a lot closer, but I think we still win the league. I think we've got enough replacements, and we make it work. If we lose two, three, four more players this summer and end up losing, you know, seven, eight guys, I'm not sure we're winning the league next season. Full time, 2 0. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. Leave it on that note. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.